This is every single train in Transport Fever 2, all 87 of them. It's taken me several days to get them all on this track here, but today we're going to find out which is the best train in Transport Fever 2, and more importantly, which trains you should use in certain circumstances in your saves. Okay, here we are. Now we've got all the trains. Let's press play in 3, 2, 1 go and they are off there we go look at that for a start all of those trains speeding away looks like the euro jewel has a good head start over here but it's going to have some strong competition with the br103 because this train is very very fast i have noticed it has a lot of acceleration as you can see we're actually overtaking the train right now now what about the steam trains how are they doing all the way back here I'm actually very surprised to see the later steam trains, uh, even though they are designed more for carrying heavy goods for like a long distance, uh, they are actually lagging behind a little bit and the mallard is in front over here. Some of the early electric trains are catching up a little bit, as are the express trains, it's just all those weight of the carriages that are slowing it down, but they are overtaking now and now they are actually getting to some speed. Who's winning the high speed train race? It looks like the Fuxing Hao is winning. Very fast looking train to be fair. Just followed behind by the ice and then the new Speed Dance Express. They actually based this bullet train on a plane fuselage. You can probably tell in the architecture of the actual train. And that's what gives it the absolute top speed that it can go. But it does have very poor acceleration, meaning that steam trains can beat it in acceleration. So if you're going a short distance, never, ever, ever use a high speed train. Not a good plan. And if you're going to do intercity, you can probably see that this train behind is very slightly just lagging behind a little bit from the bullet train. That's the difference. All these trains, when they're all next to each other, they don't look very fast. But believe me, they are going very quickly right now. These electric goods trains are actually starting to show weakness because they don't actually have very high top speed. And this, guys, is why you definitely need to use these high speed trains over long distances. These are not intercity trains, 100%, because they have terrible acceleration. They are still not at full speed right now, and we've covered the whole map pretty much. And they're starting to break. And here we go into the finish line. Looks like we have a winner. So let's check out the results of the trains. But don't go anywhere because we have an even more important race coming up. But make sure you watch this because you might find out a better train that you aren't using in your safe for more efficiency. Now, is any steam train going to be any diesels or electrics? Let's find the front steam train over here, which I believe is all the way over here. Now, I believe the Hawaifa, the Hawaifa is going to be the fastest because the Hawaifa is a brilliant high speed train but it is not an intercity train. This is very important. This is a cross country train because this train is very good. Look at that, it's overtaking the Mallard. Very, very quick top speed, but it's not very good at acceleration. The Silver Streak is a good intercity train because it has some good acceleration, but some pretty terrible high speeds. So that's an interesting one. This train here is very, very bad at high speeds. It only goes a top speed of 50 which is incredibly slow. So this train's from about 1880 and we're currently going at 47, which is nearly as fast as this train from the 1980s. What? So definitely avoid that train if you're going long distance. Although it does have good power. And then we've got the diesel versus the Mikado, who's gonna win and the Mikado pulls in and just barely takes the lead there by about a meter. And then we've got the slow ones. This crocodile really surprises me. I expected that to go a lot quicker. Interesting, that shows the example of early uh, electricity. And, uh, and how that's not working as well as most of the speed locomotives. Look at all these that are pulled in before it. Got the Class GV and the Class T battling it out. Here it is. I think the GV is going to win. See, the GV is very good at pulling a heavy load, but the Class T is very good at acceleration. So that's what you want to use those for. So these are the trains that you want to be using if you're doing intercity or more early game, especially the Class T. Very, very good train, the Class T. So the Prius and the Class B are very good at freight and hauling a lot of stuff. Pretty good, okay at acceleration, but very bad top speed would not recommend those two trains for passenger definitely avoid those two but let's go even further back now and you can see just quite how bad some of these trains are this one makes a lot of sense because this is designed to not go fast it's designed specifically in mind to haul a lot of stuff up a hill which is a little bit of a different uh, need than a flat track that's going straight to a city uh, so i understand that one uh, but then we got the the borsig and the general yeah n not quite good especially for the year they were made uh, definitely not the best considering the class T's been here like maybe two minutes now You'd think that the later trains are actually better, but no the class T very very good train Definitely recommend that one for your early game uh, And then we got the of course 1850 really slow ones Which it surprises me how good the class V is in comparison to the six-wheeler and over here this D13 Because they are very very slow compared, but it looks like we are pulling in the last three trains now of course do not use the class D13 at all costs. <laughs> 
Now this is definitely going to yield different results because trains in this game have different stats, three different main ones. You got your top speed, power, and you've got acceleration. These are the main three things and they very much affect what you can do with each train. So without further ado, let's get on with this. Let's start the race in three, two, one, and start. The race has begun and I'm really curious to see how slow these trains are going to accelerate. And wow, look at that. You can see these guys really heavily accelerating away. These steam trains going incredibly slow. We've got three miles per hour on this train, but it's actually taking a lead over the European train, which is interesting. And we're about neck and neck. And there you go. Look, more acceleration from the uh, American train. Some of these guys are really speeding ahead. Look at that. That is really weird to see. That is a really weird visual right there. Wow. All those different speeds. Anyway, right, uh, they're all setting off. So by the looks of it, this Russian train was beating the EU train that won last time, but it's top speed, once again, is getting the train up to some crazy heights right there. I feel like that might be some developer bias, to be honest, considering I believe they are German. But uh, yeah, very good train, that one right there, definitely. So you can see the Euro Jewel is actually, it's got better acceleration and better power and almost as good top speed as the BR-103, but it's just taking the cake with slightly higher top speed. Cannot believe it, incredible. But I spot something really curious right at the back of the pack. Check this out. So all the way back here, we've actually got this train here, which I expected to do really well. It's very good at hauling itself. It has very high top speed with it's just these main cars, but with the extra weight, it's really struggling, which is an interesting thing. We got over here the Flying Scotsman, which I'm surprised to see has low power, high top speed, fair enough though. Then we've got some incredible top speed coming out of the Hawaitha once again. Yeah, same situation, so they're basically neck and neck, but it really shows its strengths after a bit of time accelerating, because once it can get past these guys in their acceleration, it really does go fast, the Hawaitha. But we're going up to the P36 here, the Russian Express, just clawing past it barely. I'm actually very surprised to see that these high speed trains are able to keep up with the extra weight because I'm pretty sure these trains are all designed to go at the actual weights that the amount of cars on board actually has. So I'm very surprised to see they're doing as well as almost as well as some of these standalone electric trains designed just for this. But one thing that's tr really sad, truly, is the rail bus. Poor little rail bus, look at him. It's barely getting past the six wheeler, which is a train from the 1850. It's a sad thing to see. If you made it this far, type F for rail bus in comments. The class V, here we go, insane speeds, 11 miles per hour. Wow, I would love to be on that train. But here's a surprising note. The D13, the European map set, is actually got more power than the class V but the Class V has higher top speeds. So I'm curious to see which of these trains is actually going to beat each other. The EP2 takes the win for the low tier trains, which is an interesting thing. The American electric locomotive is actually a very powerful train. We saw in the previous run, it didn't have that much top speed compared to the other trains. But when we compare it with weight, you can definitely see it has much more power. It is a definite warning not to use some trains though. You can see this crocodile here is actually still getting beaten all the way over here after it's had plenty of time to accelerate, still being beaten by the steam train that was actually made way before it. So definitely a warning not to use something new because you've got something new. Sometimes the old stuff works just as well. We've got the stragglers coming in now. These are the mid tier steam trains. That's a curious thing. So this really heavy steam train is actually being beaten by this shunting train. That's very interesting. Might be a bit of developer bias there because I believe this one is German as well. <laughs> I'm also surprised to see that this mountain climbing train is not doing very well. I expected this to be full speed already, but no, that's not the case. It has a lot of power, so I thought it would do decent, but no, not the case at all. In fact, this Class B over here, I thought would do terrible, which is actually beating it. The Class B being very, very bad in the previous race, if you can remember that. But in this, you can see that it, with load, it's actually doing very much better than uh, its counterparts. The Class GV barely is taking over the Prius just here, but it does go to show, once again, low tier trains, even though they're cheaper, are sometimes better than the later counterparts. But the Borsig really far back in the crowd over here, whereas its counterparts, the General and the Class T, are quite far ahead. So yeah, honestly, don't go for it. Not a good train. The six wheelers just got here and our last couple of competitors are rolling in now. So I think that gives us our results. So if I were you, I would definitely compare this video next time you're buying a new train in Transport Fever 2. But what is the point in having the best train in game when your stations are really bad? Check out this video for the best station in all of Transport Fever 2 for passengers.